Okay, we only have like four players appearing this year that were here last year, and here's one of them, Cedric Van Pran, and he's ready for your questions. We'll start here in the second row. Hey, Cedric, Marius Mims is a guy that thought about leaving. I'm pretty sure he's pretty glad he didn't leave. Um, where does he fit in on the O-line, and um, what, what excites you about his role this year? Uh, so, just being frank, I think he fits in as a goofball. <laughs> Right. He's the guy that provides, you know, comic relief whenever things are getting serious and hot. And, you know, you may be 100 degrees running and guys are ready to get after it. And, you know, he says something funny to kind of calm guys, guys down. He's that kind of guy. Um, but also he's, like, immensely talented. That dude is is one of God's gifts, you know, just, just physically. So um, super, super excited to see what he can do this year. Front row. Yeah, Brooks Austin, Dogs Daily. Cedric, I think dating back even to your senior year of high school, you won the State Leadership Award in the state of Louisiana for football players. Yes, sir. You've always been a leader. What does leadership mean to you? And I guess, what is your leadership style? How, how do you go about doing it? So, to be honest with you, um, I think leadership has always been important to me for the simple fact of, um, it's going to sound weird, but I've always just cared about the guys that I've put in time with. So. I'm a firm believer in if you're a friend, you're family. So that's just how I've always been. And I think that natural care just makes you want to help people out when they may not be going in the right direction. And I think that's where it originated from, is just wanting to help out people you love. Um, and what was the second half of your question? How do you go about Okay, okay, okay. Got you. Uh, so leadership style, I would say usually is very calm. So I, I would try to... Um, build as best of a relationship as I can with people. And I try to be very good about it. And the reason why is because, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I have a tendency to snap when necessary. And I think when you build those relationships, guys can take that because they understand if you're the guy that's going out your way to go eat lunch with a guy or you know, take a guy here or do this with a guy when you may raise your voice, they're not gonna take it in a way of like, oh, this guy's trying to attack me, he's trying to do something to me. They understand that he's just passionate about what we're doing. So I think that's my leadership style. I try to connect with everybody and I try to have a understanding of who they are as people. Front row. Chris Farble in KCOU 81 FM. So you, uh, Cedric, you've been, you started every single game for the past two years. You're a two-time national champion. You've proven to be one of the best linemen in America. Even though you were eligible for the draft this year, you chose to come back. Just tell me what, uh, I, I want to know what went into that decision uh, to return to Georgia for your senior year. Uh, that's, a, that's a great, great question. So I think starting off, um, just from the selfish side, even though I hate talking about myself, um, it would have to be that I felt like I could gain more from coming back. But then when you start to think about from an aspect of the University of Georgia, I really felt like I had a great opportunity to help my guys. Um, and I think that's what ultimately drove me back is that I think that we had a, a great opportunity to be a, a good team and I wanted to be a part of it um, and help try to lead the guys to let the Lord say the same, uh, a good season for us. So I think that was what it was and ultimately just the connection that I felt with the guys in, in the locker room. Third row and then pass your microphone up to the gentleman ahead of you. Yeah, they, they talk about your leadership ability, and that obviously was very successful last year. You guys only gave up nine sacks. As a unit, you guys were phenomenal. You know, this year, obviously, you have new starters, a lot of turnover um, on that line. What's it like trying to navigate that this year and also trying to make sure that, as a leader, you are there for those guys and helping them grow in that role? So, in my opinion, the beauty of an offensive line is that the more guys you have working, the more outcomes you could possibly have. So um, what we try to do is we try to spend as much time together as possible, whether that be working out, um, eating, or whatever it may be. We just try to spend a lot of time together so that whenever there's a situation where different guys could possibly play or be plugged in or whatever the case may be, um, we don't lose a beat. That's the hope, right? The hope is that you can have multiple guys play. So that's kind of what we try to, you know, I guess pride ourselves on as far as players is being so connected that multiple guys can play and be synchronized together. Back row in the aisle. I said Ben Bobick, local three news in Chattanooga. Uh, Lad McConkey is a guy that's come a, a long way w within your program, man. How, how vital is it to have a guy like him back and in, in, in those rooms and, and, and at practice and all of the above? Man, I, I will say this. It, it's amazing. I know a lot of people talk about my decision to come back, but 
I think his uh, decision to come back is something that really, really uh, will help the team. I think I think it was essential for, essential for the team to you know really be off on a good start as far as you know workouts and things like that. Um, Lad's a great guy. Um, I, I was really really excited that he decided to come back, but it's been amazing to see his growth. You know, I remember Lad always talked about you know he was so excited to just be able to travel, and then you know years later, man, he's like really really been a big piece for us making plays down the field. So uh, I'm super super proud of him. Um, and really happy for him because he's taken some uh, amazing strides in his game and also as a person. Second row. Chris Williams, CBS Oklahoma. We heard yesterday that the two new schools maybe don't know what they're in for with the SEC. So based on your experience, what's waiting for Texas and Oklahoma when they join this conference? Um, I, I want to be careful with what I say because in my opinion, I think football is football, right? Anybody, any given day, like it doesn't matter, conference, size, any of that. If it's your day, it's your day. So I don't necessarily want to get into what's necessarily waiting for them. But I will say I do think that they will be very competitive um, in this league. And I think that it will be good for the league because when you add two premier programs like that that have such rich histories, um, I think it only elevates the, the status of the conference. Front row. Your training is strong. Uh, <laughs> Brooks Austin with Dogs Daily. Uh, I, I could be wrong here, but when I turned on the film in the difference between 2021 and 2022, you know, Luke and Searles being your coach in both years, respectively, felt a, a, a difference in effort level. I could be wrong, but talk about what playing with effort means with Coach Searles and how he goes about coaching it and instilling. So uh, let me say this. I think uh, Coach Luke did a tremendous job, and he definitely did coach about effort. That was like – his biggest thing, Coach Luke would have us have nightmares about the word strain, how much he talked about it. Um, but as far as Coach Searles, man, I think he really does a good job of just allowing guys to be themselves, right? Like, he's the type of guy that allows you to genuinely be yourself. He takes the time to build relationships and understands guys. And I think over time, that allows guys to want to play hard for their coach. Like, you know, Coach Luke, I think we played hard because we were connected to him and he taught that. But I really feel like, I think on face value with what Coach Searles has taught us and you know just being connected with him, it makes a guy want to go out there and just genuinely play as hard as they can. So um, I think that was something as to why we've played hard, um, really, to be honest, for both coaches, is just having that connection you know, to them, whether it be Coach Luke or Coach Searles. Last two questions right here and then the back row. Jeff Spiegel, ABC 3340, Birmingham. Cedric, a while ago, I asked Coach Smart about this perception that the program off the field has been lacking in accountability and discipline. And his answer to that was, talk to the players. Uh, what would you say about that? Can you repeat that question? I'm sorry. Yeah, that there was a perception out there that this program is lacking in accountability and discipline off the field. You know, all of the negative press you guys have gotten. Yes, sir. And I asked Coach Smart about, you know, what he could say to change that perception. And he said, talk to the players. Okay. So I want to ask you what you would say as far as that perception goes and, and uh, how you change that perception. Well, I think it starts here. Uh, perception, uh, unfortunately, I think, in my opinion, comes from when you make a mistake and you kind of give people a way to judge you, right? So I think starting off is taking responsibility and understanding that we have made some mistakes. Um, don't shy away from it, understand it and own up to it. Um, but then from that point, taking action, right? So making sure that if, if a guy is in a bad situation as a teammate, you're taking care of him. Hey, bro, I got you. I'll make sure you get home like we're good. Like, you know, all of those things, you know, preventative measures, you know, having guys, you know, seniors, juniors, um, you know, standing up in front of the team and talking about what, you know, being safe and cautious really means to them. And then I think going on beyond that of in, ingraining it even more is just understanding that we have a responsibility to the guys that have come before us, whether it be successful businessmen or guys that have played football, to protect the University of Georgia. And I think that's really the biggest thing is just understanding that we have a responsibility to the university and some of the older guys really just speaking up about that. 
Final question in the back. Hey, Nicole Hutchison with Fox 56 in Lexington, Kentucky. My question for you is, Kentucky played you guys better than anybody last year. Uh, is that a game that you guys have circled on the schedule, um, just kind of making sure that doesn't happen again? And if so, uh, also, what's your thoughts on this new Kentucky team with a lot of those pieces uh, gone from last year's team? So I will say this. Um, we try not to get into the specifics of each game because, to be honest with you, every game is tough. There are a lot of opponents that um, give great challenges, no matter who it may be, you know, in conference, out of conference. But what I will say is that Kentucky has a great team. Um, they really, really do play hard, especially in the trenches. Those guys are really, really talented. Um, so I will say that, you know, we always look forward to um, games where we know that we'll have to, like, you know, grind it out and things like that. But to be honest with you, um, it's like that every week. Every, every game in and out of conference is a grind for us. So I will say I, I do think that Kentucky is very, very talented. However, you know, we, we try to make sure that we're on our best for every game. Senator, thank you very much. No Appreciate problem. It. God bless you all. See you next year. <laughs>